my name is Gudrun from GE Designs. Welcome to our part three of the Kimberly Quilt Along. Hi everybody, I hope you guys are having fun taking part in the Kimberly Quilt Along. Of course, Mr. HP is running the show and we got a special little treat from him to hey you. Now gonna happen now real soon so uh, we are going I hope you are working hard on your blocks if you're doing 1.0 you might have some blocks squared up already into the right size if you're still contemplating whether you're gonna move through uh, 2.0 or 3.0 I hope that decision comes soon but you can also just keep making the first blocks and make a decision later once you have more done of course take your time number one it's about having fun, enjoying yourself. We just had some pasta salad, a little break. Time mm. flies. I know these days usually go by so fast. I know that is the case for you guys, but for us, they go like this. We thought we had an hour left to prep, and here we are 20 minutes before we had to go live. So it was a little scramble. But we're going to kick it off with a little break from Mr. HP. He pre-recorded a little yoga, so it's a little bit sitting and a little bit standing. You don't need anything else. So just stay right where you are by your sewing machine and take a little break. Stretch out those sewing muscles because I know once we get a little hunched over, you gotta, you got to straighten that back out. So here is a little yoga by Mr. HP. Welcome everybody, Mr. HP here for your yoga of the day. We're going to do a combination of a little bit of chair yoga and standing yoga with some side bends, back bends, and half sun salutations. We might even just challenge your balance a little bit today. So first position, first thing to do is just shut off the external. Push away, stay seated, maybe even for a moment you stand up, shake it out for a little bit, have a nice seat, have some space around you. Here we go. Let's just sit tall, close your eyes, and just narrow in on your breathing for a moment. That deep breathing allows us just to come internal and just focus on the breathing, focus on the present moment. Inhale through your nose, exhale out through your mouth. Three to five counts. Inhale. Three to five counts, exhale. Now we seal our lips, inhaling and exhaling through our nose. Nice deep breath. You're breathing so deep that you notice it. That's what keeps you present, not worrying about all the blocks that you need to sew or what you're missing. Or Just focus on the moment. As we breathe, we sit tall, and we just go with our head rolls. Maybe keep your eyes closed. Nice little head roll one direction. Keep breathing deep, and take it the other direction. Just tilt your head over to the right side. Feel that stretch down the left side of your neck. Maybe even just kind of press it down a little bit. Inhale, head high. Other sides, tilt the head to the left. Feel the stretch down the right side of the neck. Oh yeah, feel that tenseness, tension. Inhale, center. Chin to your chest, opening up to the back side of the neck. Inhale, high, open up to the front side. And back center, big shoulder rolls back. Still breathing deep, big shoulder rolls forward. Your hands are just resting on your thigh. And if you want, you can put them to the side. Whatever feels comfortable for you, everything, everybody's a little different. And go ahead and take that right arm, bring it across your body and pull it in. Maybe turn your head to the right. Hold and breathe. Inhale, release. 
And take the other arm across, rear shoulder stretch. Keep it nice and straight. Turn your head to the left. Every time you exhale, maybe you pull it in and go a little deeper. And release it. Hands go behind your back. Either grab your wrist, your forearms, or your elbows. Just shimmy it back and just open up and hold and breathe. Stretching through the front shoulders. Release it and then kind of switch the grip. Maybe your left hand grabs your right wrist, right forearm or elbows. Just re reverse it. Hold and breathe. Nice. And release it. Going through a little bit of cat and cow, seated cat and cow, hands on your thigh. As you inhale, cow pose, look up nice and high. As you exhale, chin to your chest, open up through the back, round it out like a mad cat. I'll turn to the side, inhale, open. Exhale, round it out. Cat pose, inhale, cow pose. Exhale, cat pose. And back to the center. And a nice little torso roll. One direction and the other direction. Yep. And now we stand up. Move that chair out of the way. Standing nice and tall. Relax the shoulders down from the ears. And to feel more balanced, maybe your legs are hip width apart, just to help you feel comfortable on both sides, pressing all four points of your foot into the floor. And take a deep breath, arms nice and high. Grab the right wrist. Nice little side bend to the left. Press that right hip out. Inhale, center. Grab the left wrist, side bend to the right. Maybe you look up to the left. Inhale, center. Exhale, back bend, open. Go post the arms, inhale, high. Exhale, now fold forward, half sun salutation. Forward all the way down, let your head hang low. Inhale, you come halfway up, hands on your shins. Flatten your back slightly, bend your knees, tilt your tailbone up and reach out and gaze forward. I know you might be looking at the screen trying to figure out what I'm doing, but once you get it, just gaze forward so there's no stress in the back of your neck. Exhale, fold forward, release your head down. Inhale, circle it nice and high, reach up high. Exhale, palms together in front of your heart. Going through the side bends, back bends, and half sun salutation together. Inhale, circle nice and high. Grab your right wrist, side bend to your left. Inhale, high. Grab your left wrist, side bend to the right. Inhale, high. Exhale, back bend, open up to the sky. Inhale, high, fold forward, half sun salutation, chest to your thigh, release your head down low. Feel the release in the lower back, hamstrings. Inhale, come halfway up, press away, hands on your shins. Exhale, fold again. Inhale, circle nice and high, reach high. Exhale, palms together in front of your heart. Let's go through that one more time together. Inhale, circle high. Grab your right wrist, side bend to the left. Inhale, high. Side bend to the right. Inhale, high. Nice little back bend open. Oh yes, feel that stretch. Inhale, high. Exhale, fold forward, chest to your thigh. Release your head down low. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, circle it up nice and high. Exhale, palms together in front of your heart. Half sun salutation. Thanking the sun for life, light, breath, all the wonderful things the sun does for us, even the bad sunburn. <laughs> Take a moment here and just 
Relax your hands to your side once again. A little quietness, a little breath. Being thankful that we're here and able to share our talents with everybody, share our practice with everybody, and just breathe. Just be grateful. Bringing your palms together in front of your heart as we close our yoga practice today. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. One more victory breath. Inhale. Exhale out. Thank you guys once again from Mr. HP. Allow yourself to practice, breathe, stretch, release, and just rejuvenate. May the light in me salute the light in you all. Namaste. I hope you enjoyed doing that. I did it all along with you. It's so great to really stretch and long, elongate our bodies so that we can back, get back to sewing, some, some marathon sewing. All right, so it's been, you've been busy. I have seen so many posts on Facebook. We've been going through them. Just grabbed a few photos to show you, everybody. Uh, those of you that are not on, you, on Facebook get to see some of the progress and some of your happy faces. So let's take a look at what you've been doing, what you've been up to. Here are Anne's block, be blocks, beautiful, using probably Tulip Tango, looks like. Uh, then we have... Or Carolina Lilies, either one. Oh, there's uh, Bella watching me. <laughs> I love that photo. I don't love the, my face in that photo, though. <laughs> and there are Cindy's option, trying to make a decision. Love those Santas. And then we have Debbie. She's got her windows open, working on some ho holiday. Uh, we have Beautiful Black and White by Denise. Ellen is trying to figure out what to do, and so is Gail with her options. I love all these options. You can't really go wrong. There's Hella, and she's, I think she's watching soccer as, long, as well as the quilt along, so looking good. Then we have Janice. She had got a little head start, so she's got great progress. Um, then we have a crew, uh, I think they're in South Dakota. This is Susan and Joni and, and more having a blast. And then we have Julie and friends in Florida. Love it. Look at those happy faces. Can't, I can't, can't stand it. I love it so much. All right, so then we have Kathy's block. She's working on two. Love that. Working on two at a time. We have Kathy Lynn. Working on some vintage Christmas fabrics. Lisa. Ooh, I love these. These are from Louis and Irene Fabrics. Gotta love that. And then we have a uh, husband and wife, Lucky and Joan, doing this together. Lucky's uh, blocks are on the, on the right, and Joan's are on the left. Love that. What a great activity together. We have Maria's blocks. Oh, and then we have Nancy. She's got some vintage fabrics, <laughs> some of my, my original prints way back in the day, Nordic Visions. Then we have, uh, this is Peggy, full blues and greens. Love that. Uh, Sophie has great florals, classic. And then we have Sue looking out her bright window. Great light in that room. I can see that. All right, so great work, everybody. Thank you for all your posts. I, we will gather more photos after, um, you know, we get through everything. It's kind of, kind of hectic here between sessions. But we're going to have a massive, massive slideshow for you tomorrow during our Tipsy Monday show. Remember, Tipsy Monday is tomorrow at 4. But let's check out our winners, Mr. HP. You got our winners from part two from last se session. Uh, yep, drum roll, I'll leave it to you this time. <laughs> Kathy Jarvis, congratulations, Kathy. Send us an email to help at gquiltdesigns.com. And then our second winner is Joyce Wood. Congrats, ladies. Uh, like I said, send an email to help at gquiltdesigns.com and we'll get your prize. We have to get your information. So we'll get to that right away next week. 
or next week. This com it's already next week. <laughs> this week. Thank you so much. All right. So now hopefully you made a decision which version uh, you're going to continue on with, whether you're just doing Kimberly 1.0, maybe you're doing 2.0, maybe you're doing 3.0. So we're going to go into the next step, which is trimming those blocks for the version 2.0 and 3.0. And then I'm going to show you here on my design wall, I got some blocks on the wall to show you. So let's check out the next part three. Hi, my name is Gooder from GE Designs. And in this video, I'm going to take you through part three of the Kimberly quilt. So for this part three, we are going to finish up our version 2.0 and 3.0 blocks and all that's left is trimming them up. Now we're going to trim them a bit smaller than the original Kimberly blocks because we have an added seam in there. So we are going to be using the half inch markings on the ruler. So for the squared ruler, we're going to be looking for the eight and a half inch square, which is a white square. So I like to put my stickers on the corners of the square so I can easily see that white dotted line. Make sure you're looking at the white dotted line and not the black. So then I'm going to move my stickers on the bottom over to cut through the correct uh, slits for the squared ruler. Now, if you're using the XL, I'm going to show you with that one later, um, you can just use the other side. So we're looking at the white square here. So what I want to do is align the dotted white line on the seam that we just added for the version two blocks. And then the other dotted line, you want that to land on the two corners of the outside block approximately. So then I always just check to see if my white square is inside everywhere and it seems pretty centered. And then I'm ready to make the two cuts. And then we're going to turn the block. For the second cut, we already have the top and bottom trimmed. So we can align that with the white lines of the squares. And then we're going to take that diagonal line again on this diagonal seam. So now you don't worry about the corners on the other side, just this diagonal seam. And then we're going to be parallel on the bottom and then you make the two cuts. In the pattern, I show you the first positioning. And so when you do the second cut, that's all that matters, just the diagonal and then the top and bottom. And then you have your blocks squared up perfectly. We want this seam to come directly to a corner and then this will be semi-aligned in the center. So let me show you that again with the XL ruler. I have another block here. For the XL ruler, it has the turnaround feature for half inch sizes. If we're squaring up full inch sizes, we use this side. We turn it around for the half inch. So here, I just find my eight and a half inch square again. And then I have the eight and a half inch markings on the bottom to cut through. So same thing, I'm using the white dotted diagonal line on the seam and then on the two corners. And then I make my two cuts. And then I turn my block and ready to do the second cut, aligning just the top and bottom of the square and the diagonal line on the seam, and that is it. If you don't have the stripology rulers, you can use any ruler to trim these to a size. What, what you want to make sure is trying to be as centered as you can and make sure that that diagonal seam comes to the corner so that you can more easily nest your seams and everything comes together. Now we are going to do the same for the version 3.0. This is going to be trimmed to eight and a half as well. In this case, we want to make sure we start the trim with it aligned this way because we're only trimming a little bit of this side because we had just on a vertical seam. 
but once we turn it on the second cut, it's going to be a bigger trim. So, same thing here. In this case, we are just aligning that center line on that center seam, and then the other center white line on the two corners, outside corners of that inner in, inside half square triangle. So now we have it aligned. You can see there's just barely a trim on each side. See, just a little trim, and then we turn it. And now, again, we use the horizontal line on the seam, vertical line on the two points. And you will notice there's a lot more to trim on these second cuts. And that's just because we cut the block apart. And there it is. So we have an eight and a half inch square block. So very similar process with the XL ruler. I don't think I need to show you. So now all that's left to do for our quilt is lay it out. So I'm going to start with just the regular, regular block, our Kimberly blocks. Now, I have mine stacked in two stacks where I did the light on the outside and dark on the outside. You don't have to be that organized, especially if you have a lot of colors. It really doesn't matter. For the original Kimberly, because nothing is ever going to, the seams are never going to come together, so you don't have to worry about it. So you can just start laying it out however you want. Um, and we do just horizontal rows. The only thing I want to make, you want to make sure, is that you always have these seams going the same direction. And why is that? And do we have to do that? Well, we don't have to do that. But this makes sure if we were to turn it, you would end up with seams coming together. And then you would either have to nest them or you would have a bumpy seam. Now, if it doesn't matter to you, you can just turn it. And this goes back to where I was talking about when I have my stack of squares and I turn them. And so you want to make sure that you are turning them always either counterclockwise or clockwise so that they all end up kind of with the same, same angle. So here, this one, I guess I, I did wrong. So I'm just going to turn this one. And that happens to the best of us. We do them wrong. So if it doesn't matter too much in the block final, I will just flip them around, and I don't really care. So there it is. You will just keep going like this until you have a nice layout. I will show you uh, later on on my design wall. But simple as that, we do horizontal rows and then press one row to the right, the second row to the left, and then you're able to nest every single seam when you put the blocks together. So this is regular Kimberly. Now let's talk about version 2.0. For version 2.0, we have two options for layout. And I, since I had such a, a light and dark, I actually put mine in two stacks so I can kind of play with it. So the uh, regular version is just laying them out next to each other in horizontal rows so that your center rectangles will always kind of be angled the same way. So you would literally just go like this however you want it, and then the next row would be like that. So you could do that. The second option for a layout <clears throat> would be turning them. So you would start like this, and then you would always turn every other block. So like this, so I always have a light and a dark. And then and this, in this part, you would have to be okay with your blocks turning like multiple different ways. So we need wrong that and then like this so what happens when you lay these together you will alternate the uh, direction of these centers 
but also you can kind of see a little bit of a pinwheel happening here when we lay them together. So you just keep playing with it like that, like this. And then we have this way. Correct now. That. And this. So the next pinwheel happens over here. Always have to kind of step away when I lay out my blocks. It's better to step away a little bit and look at it from farther away because when you're up close, it's harder to see it. So then we have this one. So you can see that there's a pinwheel here and then there's a pinwheel here and you alternate the angle of this, it will create a lot of fun movement. So you can choose either one for your layout on the 2.0. So let's check out the last one. Now that one will also kind of depend on your coloring and if you have directional prints, a lot of them are not. As you can see, I had quite a bit of directional prints so you will always end up with mirror image blocks. So you would have one that's dark on the outside right, and then the other one would be dark on the outside left if you wanted them to be oriented the same way. Now, if you don't have directional fabric, it's no big deal. You could always turn them, and they would be the same thing. So I just put mine into two groups based on where the dark and light is. Um, you don't have to do that. Like I said, if you don't have many directional prints or you don't care about it, they can all go in the same pile. So how I'm going to do this, I'm going to start my first row with the light on the right, on the left side. And then, so that'll be my whole first row because that just makes it easier for me to arrange things. And so I want to mix up these colors and shades. And then in the next row, I would do the darker ones that are on the left. So then we both have these seams that would nest nicely and just really switching things around. Now, of course, I'm just kind of throwing these down, not really thinking about if I'm repeating too many things or not. Um, always good to step away and look at things. So you would always kind of get some movement in this. There's always a dark against the light if you if you created yours this way, but that is uh, a w another way to, to do this one. Now, an alternate layout, if you have prints that are not directional, you can always turn every other, and I would recommend this if you have multiple col colors. It's a little bit harder for me because I have such limited colors. Then you can all, um, turn every other one and create an even more of a movement. So again, I would prefer to do that if I had more colors because then I would never have the same colors touching and kind of messing up the layout. So I think I will stick with the original layout. I just wanted to show you that option because it's always fun to play when we have our blocks done and are ready to lay out our quilt. All right, so this. So that is version 3.0. Well, there it is, just uh, on a smaller scale, showing you a little bit about the layout. But I do have some blocks up on my design wall. I actually have two. Now that we're here in the studio, we have the uh, amazing space. So I have two big design walls. So let's start by checking out my version 3.0. I don't have all the blocks done but I have over half, so let's check it out. I'm making a lap size quilt. So since I have both the ivory and the caramel brown as my background, I'm kind of playing with alternating it so that I get the secondary design of these squiggle lines of brown coming down, but I'm not sure I have all enough, like enough or equal amounts, I think I do, but it'll it'll have to I'll have to see. But I'm playing with that. So you can see they're very limited colorway. 
And that's where I think it's more successful just to stay this way and orient the blocks the same way, just always alternating the light and dark, I, like I explained. So uh, if you have colors or fabrics that are multicolored and all mixed up, then you can play with turning them. What happens when you turn every other block or something, it just adds a little bit to the busyness, I feel like. So some people love that, others like more of an order, and uh, I'm kind of somewhere in between. <laughs> so I like a little bit of both. But let's take questions before I head over to my design wall. Uh, you can see a few of my Kimberly blocks here in the corner, but I have another camera which I can show you straight on what I got going on there. So uh, any questions coming up? Did you see any questions? That's great. Well, when you don't have any questions, that's really great to hear from me because that means that the video was concise and to the point. So, um, all right, let me just take you over to my design wall. So what I have up here are my Kimberly 1.0 blocks. So I'm gonna walk over. I am making a larger quilt. So this will be probably a twin size, but I have laid out the size of the lap. So six blocks across, and then it'll be eight blocks down for the lap size. But I'm so far loving this. I haven't done much of the, the uh, kind of red rock color blocks yet, so it'll be more mixed in. But I'm loving the idea and the feel of this quilt already. So simple, just horizontal rows. And what I was trying to explain to you with the seams going all in the same direction, we want them all to be going the same direction. And that goes way back to part one when we put our blocks or our squares and turned them before we cut them. So that's where that comes in. If you accidentally turned them the other way or if you didn't stack all your uh, fabrics right side up, maybe you put some right side down, that's what happens. Then you get it oriented the other way. But if your fabrics are not directional, no big deal. You just turn your block so the seams are all going the same way. And you won't have to worry about any seams coming together to create bulk or having to nest or anything. All right, so that is Kimberly 1.0. Let me show you over here. I only have a portion of it. I have four blocks across. This is my uh, 2.0, and this is layout number two. That's what I want to create because I wanted to create the pinwheels because I already have one quilt done in the other layout. So I think this is going to be really fun. Uh, and a cool quilt. This is made out of the snow kissed fabric bundle, so it's got a, a real kind of wintry feel, still light and fresh. So I, I love it. Now you have to be okay with fabrics turning every, every way. If you, I have some directional fabrics, but I don't really care because once they turn every single direction, they're, they're kind of not that directional anymore because quilts are thrown on people any which way. So I don't care about it, but you have to be kind of okay with that if you have directional prints, just don't know that. Now, if you do have directional prints and you want them all to be oriented right side up, then just stick with the first layout, layout number one for uh, the version two. What's the fabric you're using? Um, this one is called Snow Kissed, the one I used for the 2.0. The bundle I used for, for my regular Kimberly is Hedgerow, but I did add uh, three fabrics from our Red Rock Color Club bundle, so some of those rusty reds. And then I also added three golds, uh, just from our one yards. I just needed a little more color. Uh, there was just two fabrics in the bundle that were that color, these two. And so I felt like it need, for balance, it needed a little more. I'm really happy with it. I think it's gonna be really a great quilt. So let's go back over to um, the main camera and Oops. Careful. Let me not fall. <laughs> so let's see if you have any questions for me now. Oh, I wanted to tell you about the fabric I am using for 3.0. Can you put that picture back up? That is To the Sea bundle by Janet Claire from Oda. So uh, the bundle is really well balanced because it's got equal amounts of blues and then equal and then uh, the lights and the, and the browns. So I think it's going to turn out perfectly, this, this idea I have of the alternate blocks. All right, so I've got, I saw a lot of comments uh, from you that have been using some pre-cuts, some, 
some layer cakes, 10 inch square pre-cuts. That you're frustrated with the sizes and you're from now on going to use your rulers to cut everything. I've, this is what I've been doing for years and years. I love the pre-cuts just because of the sizes, but I like to create my own. And so that's why I started doing the bundles. So the, rem so the recipes remain on the site? Yes. Yeah, so the recipes are all on the blog. They will stay there. So uh, the blog post will stay there. Just know if you hit the blog, you have to scroll down to find it. But the best way to find older blog posts and things like that, go to the search bar on our website, which is in the upper left corner. Type in Kimberly or even type in Kimberly QAL. It will bring everything up. So it will bring the blog post. Because so, our search feature doesn't just search our products that in, in the store, but it also searches our blog. So whenever there's a, either, even when we do our fabric pulls, that's all going to be, is searchable so it'll pull up so it's just the greatest feature I use it like multiple times a day myself it's easier to find than to go um, go search for it all right oh so also on the blog I added some of you were asking where to find part one and part two if you came in late um, they are now they're all on YouTube and on our Facebook page but easy way to find them go to the Kimberly quilt along blog I have added links to both part one and part two and we will add part two three once we are off the air. So we'll include all those links right there. And I hope you've remembered, if you haven't done so yet, to make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that bell so you get notifications. Make sure your iPad or your phone uh, allows notifications from YouTube and then everything will pop up when we're live. You'll get notified. All right. So any more questions on these little things we've been talking about, a lot of things we've been talking about. Uh, they're saying they loved, oh, they loved the yoga. Oh, Kobe's not He's here yet, but I, I am going to check on him. He wants to come visit. Um, yeah, we are at GE headquarters, and he's at home. He, or he should be home by now from his sleepover. And you're welcome for the yoga. Anytime. Okay, if making the 2.0 layout... Two, what do you think about using some fabrics as the light in some blocks and dark in others, depending on the other fabric? Um, so when you, when you do that, you actually get flipped blocks. So I think it wouldn't matter because you can always turn them. So if you don't care about directional fabrics, it's going to be great because you can turn those blocks. So it works out great. When did you design the uh, stripology ruler? The first Strabology ruler came out 2013, I believe, 2012 or 13. So, I mean, the di design process was going on a whole year before that. But I think, I believe it came out 2013 or 14. I don't remember. 13, 14. 13, I think. I'll have to go back and look. <laughs> yeah, because next year will be a 10-year anniversary. <gasps> wow. Here's a question. That's exactly what I was answering. Yeah, I read that and was answering that. Mm hmm I think I understood your question. So, but, but with, with two, and I can kind of explain it. Oh, I can show you right here. I have two blocks. So I have two blocks that I uh, cut apart. Oh, is five different fabrics in the layer cake enough variety? You know what? It depends on the size of the quilt. If you're making a small quilt, like a crib size, yeah, that should be okay. Um, I always say eight is my magic number, 12 is the ideal. That's why I do 12 piece bundles. Eight is always gives you, um, so if you say eight, then that gives you four different blocks before you have to start repeating yourself, if you know what I mean. So it's just harder with less fabrics if you're making a scrappy quilt, but you know, eight is my magic number, four, and then 12 is the. Is perfect for me. Or more. 12 or more. More is always better. That's my. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll stop on that. So here is a, an example on what I was explaining. So this is, I cut these two apart. So this was a Kimberly block, and then I sewed them back together. So you get like dark on the bottom uh, here and dark on the uh, top. But you can just turn them and they become identical blocks if you don't care about direction of the fabrics. That's what I was trying to explain. So you really get two identical blocks. Let's say if I was using solids, then they would be two identical blocks. 
So I know that was probably ha I had to show it. Sometimes it's better to show things. <laughs> I can see it in my brain, but it's better to show things. All right. Any more questions? Well, um, how do we find the music? So there's also a link on our blog to the, sh to the Spotify playlist. Just read real carefully through the Kimberly Quilt Along blog post, and there's a link in there with the Spotify playlist. It's, it's fun stuff. Lots of variety. <laughs> Lots of variety. I was, like, s singing hard to share earlier. <laughs> sure was. Real hard. <laughs> He had stepped out, so I thought nobody was here, and then he walks in as I'm, as I'm belting it out. <laughs> it sounded great. Oh, sure, I'm sure. All right, so we are going to leave you to it. Keep it up. Make some more blocks. Um, take a break, and then we're going to come back at ooh, 4 o'clock. It's already 2.41, so in about an hour and 20 minutes, we're going to come back, celebrate with... Uh, a drink, and I'm going to show you a huge slideshow of all your progress. And uh, yes, see the final, final. You see how many blocks I really get done. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you in a little bit.